Hey everyone, I'm Aria, and today I want to show you how I made this simple hair simulation in Blender. Also, if you become a member of my Patreon page, you'll get access to the blend file for this animation, as well as many of my others. Also, I'm going to start adding some sound effects and audio that I made myself, and adding that to the Patreon page as well. Okay, so let's get started. So, open up a new scene in Blender. Let's just select everything and hit delete. Next, we'll hit Shift A to add in a new mesh. Let's go to UV Sphere, right click, and Shade Smooth. Let's zoom in just a little bit here, and just like that, we're ready to add our particle system. So let's just go over to the right here, select Particle Properties. Let's hit the plus symbol here to add a new particle system, and select here. We can leave the number at 1000 here, but let's change the length to 3. Turn on Hair Dynamics, let's open up the properties here. And if you have a slower system, feel free to just leave this at 5, but I'm going to set mine to 8. And this shouldn't slow you down too much more. Open up Collisions, and again, I'm going to set mine to 5, but if you've got a slower system, you can do 3 or 4 as well. Click on the Distance, type in 0 and hit Enter, which will give you the smallest value possible. We will be using the cache settings, but we don't need to open that just yet. So let's go down here and we're just going to change the render steps to 5. Open up the viewport display and we're going to change the strand steps to 5 as well. You can see our simulation is starting to activate since we're not on frame 1. So let's just click here to go back to frame 1 just so we have our default state. Okay, so back in the particle settings here, let's open up children, select interpolated, and we can set the display and the render mount to 50. Scroll down a little bit further, and we can skip the first two, but let's open up the roughness here, and set the uniform roughness to 2. Open up the kink settings here, select this, and click on braid. Set the amplitude to 0.1, comping to 0.1. Frequency to 2.5, and let's change the shape to 0.9. So the amplitude is the strength. You can see that if I change this to 1, there's a lot more happening there. So again, we just want to leave this pretty low. The clumping obviously is how much the braids clump together. Flatness is pretty straightforward, so let's just leave that off. We want our hair to be more cylindrical as opposed to flat. And the frequency basically means how many braids will show up uh, within the length of the hair, so if you set this to something a lot higher, you'll see a lot tinier braids. And finally, our shape basically deals with how far along the hair you want to go before you start braiding. You'll notice this more in long hair type situations. So let's open up the hair shape settings here, and we're just going to change the shape to minus 099 change the diameter root to 0.075 and we can leave the other two alone and you probably saw that nothing really changed here when we did those these things will show up more once we have the render preview on the final thing we want to do is just turn off all of the gravity great so now that our particles are set up we can start adding a few forces so let's hit shift a go down to force field here click force and then we just want to go over to the physics properties here and change the strength to 25. I know it's hard to see the force, but if we were to scale it up, you'll see that it is there. And since we're not doing anything else to it, we don't really need to see it anyway. Okay, so shift A again. Let's go to force field here and next we'll add turbulence. Then over in the physics properties here, again, let's change the strength to 25 and we can leave everything else at default. And then we want to add in one more force, so shift A one more time, click force, and then this time we're going to come to the side. Hit G to move, X to lock to the X axis, and then we'll just bring this over until it's just on the edge of our simulation. Next we can set the strength to 25, and this time we want to add a fall off here, so let's set the power to 2. We also want to open up the minimum and maximum distance, set this to 0.5. And we can set the max to around 1.85 or 2, something like that. So now that we've got all of our forces, you just want to animate this one so that it spins around our simulation. So we're going to hit Shift A and go to Empty and click Plane Axis. And then we'll just zoom out a bit. And for this one, we can scale it just so we can see it a bit better. So we hit S and Scale just until it's sticking through the simulation. 
Next, we want to click our field 002. Next, hold control and click on the empty. Let's bring our mouse into the 3D viewport here. We can hold control, hit P, and we just want to make sure that we select the keep transform option. Now you can see that our field is attached to our empty, so we can animate that. Let's just click away and then we can click our empty either here or here. Let's make sure that we're on frame one. If not, you can just click here to go to frame one. Let's hit the N on our keyboard just to bring up our transform settings. And then we can just hit I. In this case, we just want to set a keyframe for the rotation. And then we're just going to click this button here to go to the end of our simulation. Click and drag to select all three of these. And we're just going to type in something really large, like say 5,000. Right click and insert keyframes. Or you can just hit I on your keyboard. Okay, so now that we've added our keyframes, we just want to quickly make sure that we're in linear. So let's just click up here and we're going to go to the graph editor. Click normalize and you can just see that our empty is animating along a bezier curve. So just hit A to make sure that you've got everything selected. Right click, interpolation mode, or you can just hit T and click linear. So now you can see that our animation is a constant line so that we won't have any speeding up or slowing down. Okay, so click here back to the 3D viewport. So now if we hit play, you'll see that our force is spinning around our particle system. But since we gave it a fall off, it's only affecting the particles in certain areas. In my animation, I gave this a little bit of movement. So let's click on our sphere. Just make sure that you're back on frame one. Hit I. And this time we just want to key our location. Let's bring our mouse up to the left here till we see this little plus symbol. Click and drag to bring out a duplicate window. Click here and then we're going to go back to the graph editor. Now we can open up our object transform. Let's hover over the window here and hit N. Go to modifiers. We can just start with our X location. We'll add a noise modifier. Then set this to something like 50. And let's set this strength to 2.5. And then feel free to just change this phase until you've got something that you like. Okay, and then instead of doing this again for each one, we can just click the copy modifiers here. Click on the Y location and then we'll just paste. Since we don't want this to be the exact same wavelength, we'll just change the phase to something different. Now we can click copy one more time, click the Z location, paste, and then again we'll just change the phase. Alright, so our simulation is complete. We can just right click on the middle here, click join, and we'll just click here to remove that window. Finally, we can go into our particle settings here. Let's scroll all the way back up to our cache settings. Open those up, make sure that our start and end frame are matching our animation. In this case, I'm just going to do 120 since the animation is pretty much the same and I'll set this to 120 as well. Then just before we bake, we want to make sure that we've got everything else attached to our sphere. So we can click on our empty and then we'll shift click our field here. Then you want to hold control and click the sphere, hover our mouse into the 3D viewport, hit control P, and let's select the keep transform option. Okay, so now that everything is attached to our sphere, our force will follow along with the sphere as well. Now just quickly before we bake, I just ran a quick test and I found that the hair was a little bit loose. So if we just go under the hair dynamics here and open up the structure, we can just click the stiffness here and set it to something like 3, which will just give us uh, a bit more stiffness against the physics. Okay, so we're finally ready to bake, so hit bake and this should only take about 30 seconds to a minute. Awesome, so now that that's done, you can just hit play if you want to give it a little bit of a preview. That's looking really good, so let's just pick a random frame or a frame that you like. Now we can add some quick materials as well as some lighting. So we can just go up to the right here and click on our render preview and you'll see of course that everything is flat and that's because we have no lighting. So let's just go over to the world properties here and instead of having a gray color we can click on this dot, click environment texture and we can add an HDRI. And if you want to use the one I'm using you can go to the link in the description. You'll notice that I'm using 4K, but feel free to just download the 1K version since it's just for lighting. And then click open. Okay, so next we can just go to our materials properties here. Let's make sure that we've got our sphere selected. Click new. We can change the base color to whatever you want. I'll just set mine to something blue. And let's just crank the value. 
Scroll down and we can turn on the metallic. Bring the roughness down to something around 0.3. And then finally, let's just crank the clear coat all the way up to 1. Okay, so you can see that the hair is still looking very chunky and not very soft. So what we can do is, since we're using EV, we can just go into the render settings here. And if we open up our hair properties, we can change our type from strand to strip. Now our hair is looking a lot softer. Okay, so it's still a little bit dark, so let's just go back to our world properties and we can set the strength of our HDRI to 2. That's already looking really good, but let's just enhance this a little bit with some lighting. So hit Shift A, let's go down to light and click area. G to move and X to lock to the X axis. Now we can just bring it out here, hit R to rotate, Y, and then let's type in 90. Click and we'll just scale this up a little bit by hitting S and typing in 5. So now we want to make a duplicate of our light, but before we do that, let's just go over to the right here to the data properties. Select a nice dark blue for our color, and we're just going to crank this to something like 10,000. Now let's duplicate this, so let's hold shift and hit D. Hit the X to lock to the X axis only. We can just bring it behind and click, and then we we'll want to rotate this by hitting R, Z, and typing 180. Okay, let's duplicate this again, shift D, and we want to bring it over here, so hold shift and hit Z to lock to the X and Y. Bring this to the side of our particles, R, Z, and 90 to rotate. Then just before we duplicate, we just want to change the color to something a little bit more red. Shift D, and we'll just drag this all the way over here on the Y axis, so hit Y to lock it. Click, and then finally we'll rotate it, so R, Z, 180. Okay, so that's starting to look really good, but there's just a couple more things that we can add to make it a little nicer. So we'll go to our render properties, make sure we turn on ambient occlusion, and we can also turn on bloom, but you can see it's a little bit uh, strong. So let's just drag this down to something a lot lower. Okay, so that's looking awesome. So we just want to make sure that our lights stick with our simulation. So let's just go back to frame one and we can click this area light here. Shift click to select all of our lights and then we can hold control click our sphere let's hover over our 3d viewport Control p and keep transform now you'll see that everything is completely linked together okay you can also add screen space reflections and refractions click the sphere and we can just make sure that we've got that set on as well now things are really starting to pop all right and if you want to add a stem to this you can hit shift a go to curve and bezier curve we can hit g and z just to bring this down a bit rotate this by 90 degrees on the y axis next we'll hit tab to go into edit mode or you can click up here hit a to select everything g and then z and we just want to bring this down so that those two dots are matching and that way things will calculate from this end point as opposed to the middle okay so hit s to scale and z next hit g and z and we can just bring this up let's go over to our curve settings here open geometry and we can make our depth something like 0.04 Right click and then we can convert this to a mesh. I just quickly added a cloth simulation to mine so you can go over here and click cloth. Most of these settings should be fine. I just usually like to add uh, self collisions just in case and everything else can just stay the same. So you'll notice that if we hit play our stem is going to start to fall which is of course not what we want. So there's just a couple things that I did for that. Let's just go back into our flat shading and turn on our x-ray preview and go into edit mode either by hitting tab or clicking here. And now we just want to select this top group of vertices and head on over to the vertex properties. We can add a new group and you can just call this whatever you want. I'm just going to call it attach and make sure that you click assign Okay, so now we can hit tab to go back into object mode. We can go back to our physics settings. Now if we open up our shape, we can click our group here and click the group that we created. And now the very final thing we want to do is of course attach our stem to our sphere. So make sure that you've got your curve selected. Control and click the sphere. Control P and keep transform. Now you'll see that when we hit play, our stem stays with our other objects. Feel free to add uh, material to this as well. Something like that. And then the very final thing I did was just add a background. So let's hit Shift A. 
mesh and we can add a cylinder. Scale this to be quite large by hitting S, S, Shift Z, and we can just drag this out to be quite large. Make sure you're in the materials properties here and click new. Let's bring the base value all the way down, bring the specular all the way down and the roughness all the way up. Okay, so if you want to add a camera, hit shift A, click camera, and then just make sure that you're roughly centered. Hold control and alt at the same time and hit zero. You select this little icon here and we change the focal length to 35. And then if you want to move your camera, you can either do it here, hit N on your keyboard and do it here. Or my favorite way to do it is if you hit F3 on the keyboard and type in walk and hit enter, you can just use your mouse to orbit, your arrow keys to zoom in and out and left and right, and then the Q and E key to go up and down. So finally, you can head over to the rendering tab. You can bring the samples up just a little bit. And I always think adding motion blur makes things look a lot better, so you can click that if you want. Save your project, render, and render image. Awesome, so you can see that it looks a little bit blurry, and that's just because of the motion blur. Once you put your final animation together, this will look nice and sharp as well. Uh, you can see how quickly that rendered. So if you want, you can also raise your samples a little bit. I always like to make my images a little bit bigger, so set this to 150%. Or if you want to do a full 4K, you can set that to 200. Save one more time and we can hit render and render image. That's looking a lot better now. You can see that there's much more definition. And then maybe you can just pick a different frame if you want. Just to get a little better idea of how it's going to look in the end. If you enjoy my work, please consider subscribing to my channel. And if you're able to help me out even further, hop on over to my Patreon page and become a member. And I hope to see you real soon. Alright, bye!